Next in my fantasy booking of the build to Money in the Bank 2023, I'm going to talk about probably the hardest build to come up with, and that is the Bloodline story. Now, the, the reason, in my opinion, it is hardest to fantasy book the Bloodline story is because it's actually the story that does get a lot of attention to detail in the WWE and in pro wrestling in general. Nothing gets more built consistently well, I guess, as the, the Bloodline story. Now, I don't think the Bloodline story is as top-notch as it was from, like, mid-2002 to WrestleMania. I do think it has faltered the last few months. But I still do feel like this is the hardest story to, to book, and that is because there are so many layers to it already that there are so many different ways you can go with this story. So I came up with my own version of the story, the build to Money in the Bank. I think the, the build to Money in the Bank might be slightly easier than, say, SummerSlam and beyond, because the real question in this story becomes, when should Roman lose the title, and to whom should Roman lose the title to? It's a very tough choice to make, and I, am, I have my own ideas who it should be, and I've talked about it on this channel before. But the longer the story goes on, is the foundation strong enough to make that happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to see how this goes, especially if I keep doing this month by month. This is going to be the hardest story for me to book, the, uh, for real. Because there's a, a lot of different possibilities, and I honestly don't know if I can do it as good as the WWE. Because all of the WWE's creative juices seem to go into this story. Which is why I think I could do a lot better everywhere else on the roster because they don't put any effort into those. But this one, uh, there's a not a, there's already a lot of effort put into this story. But we're gonna start with the June 9th SmackDown, where Jimmy Uso still cannot get through to the gaslit Jay Uso regarding Roman Reigns. There is a lot. Uh, of gaslighting that has gone on to Jey Uso, and I think that should continue to be played up, where Jey Uso once again has a decision to make. He already had this decision to make when it came to Sami Zayn and his family. He now has to choose between family members, his own brother, Jey Uso, or the leader, Roman Reigns. But I think we have to have Rikishi involved in this story because he is the father of three of the people in this story, and he is an elder of the bloodline. And I would have it where Rikishi is disappointed in Jimmy for attacking family. You can't just go attacking the head of the table. Although Rikishi does not agree with all of the ways Roman is running the bloodline, Roman is the head of the table. Roman is not here on this June 9th SmackDown because he only shows up few shows a month. So when Jimmy and Jay are out uh, in the ring uh, for a in-ring segment, I would have Rikishi come out and talk to his sons. I would have Solo and Paul Heyman there as well. Of course, there's a lot of ire between Solo and Heyman versus Jimmy Uso. But I would have Rikishi come out and interrupt because Rikishi needs to take some control of his sons right now and all of this tension between them. Solo wants to attack his own brother Jimmy because of everything that's going on. Rikishi wants to dismiss Heyman from the ring, which Heyman doesn't, of course, take a liking to, but he does leave the ring because Rikishi wants to talk to his sons alone. Rikishi wants to try and get all of them on the same page. Rikishi says he will talk to Roman and get everyone on the same page. He reiterates that Roman is the head of the table and Jimmy was in the wrong for attacking family like that in a wrestling match. But Jimmy is saying that uh, he can't stand the way Roman has been treating the family for so long now. Treating his own blood the way Roman has been treating him and Jay. And... Jimmy ain't no bitch, according to Jimmy. So Jimmy's thinking maybe Roman should not be the head of the table anymore. And then Jimmy starts talking directly to Jay in the ring, 
saying that the only way for the family to be on the same page again is for Roman to no longer be the head of the table. And then Jimmy would walk out on the rest of his family in the ring. Now, I think somebody else you could establish through this storyline more on the main roster on SmackDown is Grayson Waller, who is seen talking to Heyman in the back and kind of goading Heyman on about the fact that he just got kicked out of the ring by Rikishi. I think Grayson Waller makes for a, uh, a good shit stirrer. And in stirring some shit with Heyman, he gets Heyman to agree to, to be a guest on the Waller effect next week on SmackDown. And then another thing we could have happen backstage in this June 9th SmackDown is Jimmy Uso going to Adam Pearce and wanting a shot at Roman's championship. Because once again, Jimmy reiterates to himself and Adam Pearce that the only way to get his family back on track is for Roman to not be the head of the table. And Jimmy seems pretty convinced of this. But Adam Pearce is not so sure he could just give Jimmy a title shot just like that. Well, that brings us to the June 16th SmackDown. And the first time we see the bloodline on the June 16th SmackDown is Rikishi with Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Solo. Rikishi is trying to get Roman and Heyman to see that everyone on the same page is best for the bloodline. Now, Roman has the utmost respect for the elders, but Jimmy needs to pay for his actions in Roman's mind. And Heyman asks if Rikishi is aware of Jimmy wanting a match with Roman at uh, Money in the Bank, and Rikishi is aware. But to Heyman's surprise, Roman wants that match too, because Roman says that Jimmy will get punishment from Roman in that match. Heyman tries to hold Roman off from that idea until they know where Jey Uso actually stands. But Roman wants the match and wants Heyman to go to Adam Pearce to make it happen. But then Roman whispers something in Heyman's ear without Rikishi and Solo hearing what he is telling Heyman. So Heyman goes to Adam Pearce and dis to discuss the contract signing for tonight with a condition guess we'll find out what that condition is during the old good old-fashioned contract signing. Later in the show, Jimmy and Jey Uso arrive at the arena together with Jimmy telling Jay he is doing the right thing. But before we get to the Bloodline uh, contract signing, Grayson Waller has pulled off something big for the Waller effect. He has a huge guest, Paul Heyman. Waller tries to get Heyman to talk about the messy bloodline dynamics right now. He also tries to get Heyman to talk about if he is upset with Rikishi for kicking him out of the ring last week. Once again, establishing Waller as a, a shit-stirring character that he can be. I feel like on NXT sometimes they made him go way too over the top in, in Waller effects. I, I like the scrolling on the bottom to uh, all these fans to get Grayson over, but... I think establishing Waller as more of a shit stirrer rather than just a straight up shit talker is better. But even though Waller is stirring shit, uh, Heyman, ever the politician, plays it off pretty good. He says he's fine with Rikishi and that he believes the bloodline will be fine by August. Maybe as fine as soon as next week. To end that smackdown, bloodline is out for a contract signing minus Rikishi. The contract reads that Jimmy gets a match and title shot against Roman if, and only if, Jimmy fights Jey Uso next week. This is the condition that Roman made Heyman put in this possible contract signing for a match. Now, of course, Jay and Jimmy are both upset to hear about this and are both about to get in Roman's face, but uh, Solo steps in the way of Roman Reigns, still being Roman's right-hand man uh, for his dynamic within the bloodline. Jey Uso does not want this at all, but Jimmy says it's a deal. Jimmy is down for this deal. If that is what he has to do to save the bloodline and give it a new head of the table, then he will. So after Jimmy agrees to these terms and starts signing the contract, Heyman 
is in the corner telling Jey Uso that Jimmy does not care about him and that Jimmy is being nothing but selfish. So we have uh, Heyman being the shit stirrer when it comes to these dynamics between uh, Jey Uso and Jimmy Uso, all a part of Roman's usual gaslighting games where he's trying to continue to put a sever between brothers now of Jay and Jimmy. Roman's trying to uh, keep the twins apart because he thinks that will establish power over Jimmy within these dynamics of the bloodline because the bloodline story should play up the political aspect of it all, of who wants to be the head of the table again. That is where this story all started and I do think coming back, coming back full circle with it all does make a lot of sense. See, the problem with the bloodline story is just like, if you're gonna really wait for Roman to lose next year, WrestleMania, have all these months, how do you continue to keep this bloodline story good? It's, it's a tough task to pull off. So that's why I don't know if I would wait that long for Roman to lose the title. But anyway, let's get back to June. Uh, the June 23rd SmackDown SmackDown would start with Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso so that Jimmy can get his match against Roman Reigns. The match starts as a real match, the brothers going against each other. But midway through, Jay Uso walks out of the ring and gets counted out on purpose. Jay would grab a microphone, talking about how he's sick of the games and the confusion of the family. And if Jimmy and Roman want to kill each other, then so be it. Jay says he had his match against Jimmy tonight, and he lost. So Jay leaves, just completely. And technically, Jimmy did get the match against Jay Uso, and won via countout, so he does get his match against Roman now. Jimmy would cut a promo after Jay walks away, on Roman and how he needed to step up and be the one to put the end of Roman's ways as the head of the table. He talks about how Roman has lost control of the bloodline and the only way to fix it is having a new head of the table. In the back, Heyman wants to talk to Jay and make sure he is not on Jimmy's side in this matter after what just happened with the match because of course Roman's not on SmackDown tonight. So Heyman has to do all this work getting to know where everything stands, but Jay does not want to talk about it. Solo stops Jay from leaving as well and going to the locker room. Jay says he is not going to be against Jimmy because Jimmy is his brother, his twin, his family. But that bodes the question from Heyman. Is Jay then against Roman and Solo since he's not against Jimmy? Jay does not answer and walks past Heyman and Solo. At the end of the SmackDown that week, Jay is leaving the arena and Heyman is outside. Heyman once again tries to see if Jay is on Roman's side in the match against Jimmy at Money in the Bank. And Jay Uso still does not answer. He walks away, but the sound of a speeding car can be heard. And somebody mows down Jay Uso. Now, I think this this fits the story for many reasons because once upon a time, Rikishi did it for The Rock. I did it for The Rock. What? The question becomes, who did this for Roman? Now, we are going to have Heyman as a suspect, of course, because he was out there, but. This can establish other future storylines. But yeah, I, I, I like this for many reasons because does it make me a big fan of the Attitude Era? Probably too much of a fan of the Attitude Era. Maybe, maybe. But it has a tie to history thanks to Rikishi and it ends SmackDown on a cliffhanger and pro wrestling episodes. This is TV. TV episodes can still end on cliffhangers. Once upon a time... The WWE was good on ending with cliffhangers, but not these days. Lastly, on the June 30th SmackDown from England, Jimmy Uso kicks off the show demanding Heyman, Roman, and Solo explain who ran over his brother last week and put Jey Uso out of action for who knows how long. 
But Rikishi is the one who comes out. And Rikishi is also very upset. Rikishi also suspects that if anyone knows that what went down last week and why it went down, it is Paul Heyman because Heyman was outside there right when it all happened. So Rikishi calls out Heyman, but it is Solo Sokoa who comes out. And Solo, who doesn't talk often but is talking today, says Roman and Heyman are not here yet. And that Solo himself has no idea what happened to Jay last week. But Solo wants answers too. To end that SmackDown, the, uh, the go-home show for Money in the Bank, Roman and Heyman come out. And Jimmy, Rikishi, and Solo quickly follow. Roman is upset too with what happened to Jay. He does not know who ran down Jay, but Roman vows to find out who it was. Roman would then get in Heyman's face wanting to know the truth. Does Heyman know what happened? Heyman swears to O Tribal Chief that he does not know. I would, however, have uh, Heyman bring up the fact that Rikishi has a history of doing this. Doing it for The Rock. Rikishi would be upset by this comment because Rikishi wouldn't run over his own son. Roman has to hold back Rikishi from getting in Heyman's face. And the bloodline is still having all these cracks, all of this vitriol towards each other. Jimmy does not buy that Heyman does not know what happened. He stopped Jay from leaving when he was trying to. Heyman says it was probably someone trying to further destroy the bloodline. Heyman uh, begs Roman to know if Roman believes Heyman. Roman would get in Heyman's face again and make Heyman swear once more he does not know what happened. Roman does believe Heyman, but when Roman turns around from getting in Heyman's face, questioning Heyman, he would eat a super kick from Jimmy. And when Solo goes to attack Jimmy, Rikishi stops his son from attacking Jimmy. So it's just Jimmy and Roman left to brawl to end the go-home smackdown for money in the bank. So that's how I would uh, play up these dynamics from the bloodline going into money in the bank for a match between Jimmy and Roman. Jey Uso out of action because of getting mowed down. I will book the actual Money in the Bank pay-per-view once I continue to go through these other stories uh, going in to uh, Money in the Bank. Let me once again say I'm just doing this for my own amusement. But uh, let's hear some of your ideas for the Bloodline story in the comments.